Welcome to another video and for today we'll discuss limit of trigonometric functions involving special limits. So in this lesson we'll be dealing with these four special limits. The limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 equals 1. The limit of the reciprocal of that function as x approaches 0 equals 1. The limit of 1 minus cosine x over x as x approaches 0 equals 0. And the limit of the reciprocal of this function above as x approaches 0 is equal to 0. Now remember that uh, in these four special limits, you have to look into the value of the inside angle and your denominator. Now, if your inside angle and your denominator are equal, the answer is automatically 1 here if it's sine x over x. And if it's 1 minus cosine x over x, as long as your inside angle and your denominator are equal, the answer is equal to 0. Now let's have a few examples so we can illustrate how to use these four special limits in solving for uh, the limit of trig functions. Now let's have example number one. We have the limit of sine of 3x over x as x approaches 0. In solving this one, we have to look into the value of your inside angle and your denominator. Now, since they are not similar, then we cannot apply directly our special limits. If you're in a hurry, you can uh, just divide 3x and x, so the answer is 3. Therefore, the answer for this one is 3, but we have to show our solution. So let's make use of our special limits. Now, the rule is you can apply those special limits if your inside angle and your denominator are equal. Now, how can you make these two equal? Of course, we cannot. Uh, do anything with our inside angle since this is already fixed. So what we can do is manipulate our function such that our denominator will become equal to our inside angle. Now how do we make x equal to 3x? We multiply this one by 3. Now if we multiply our denominator by 3, we also have to multiply our numerator by 3. This is multiplication property of equality. Now, if we simplify, we get 3 sine 3x over 3x. Now, this one, this term right here, is already equivalent to 1. So, we have 3 times 1 equals 3. Therefore, the limit of sine 3x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 3. This is our final answer. Now, let's move to another example. We have the limit of 3x over sine of 2x as x approaches 0. Now, this looks similar to one of our special limits. However, our numerator and our inside angle are not equal. Now, remember that we cannot uh, alter the value of our inside angle. So what we have to do is to look for a way that our numerator will be equal to our inside angle. Now, if you want a quick way of solving this one, you can simply divide your numerator and the inside angle. So this is 3x over 2x. The answer is 3 halves. But we have to show our solution. So what we have to do is to look for a value that we can multiply to our function such that our numerator will be equal to our inside angle. So since this is 2x, we can multiply our function by 2. And we can just interchange the position of 3 and 2 so that our uh, numerator will become 2x. So if we interchange them, this will become 2x over sine of 2x times 3 halves. We just uh, interchange their position. So observe that we have here 2x and 3 here. Now since this one is already in the form similar to our special limit, we know that the value of this one is simply equal to 1. So we have 1 times 3 halves equals 3 halves. Therefore, the limit of 3x over sine of 2x as x approaches 0 equals 3 halves. This is our 
final answer. Now let's have another example. We have the limit of uh, sine 3x over sine 2x as x approaches 0. Now this example looks a little different to our previous example since we have sine in both our numerator and our denominator. So what we can do is make use of the values that are available in our function. So we have 3, 2, and this variable x. So let's multiply our function by 3 over 3, 2 over 2, and x over x. All of these are just equal to 1. Therefore, we are not altering the original value of our function. So what we're going to do next is to look for pairs that we can combine to either our numerator and denominator to make it look like our special limits. So let me just use a different color here. Let's use green. So since we have uh, 3x here, then we will make use of 3 and x in a denominator. So this becomes sine uh, 3x over 3x. Now, we have sine 2x in our denominator. So we're going to make use of 2 and x here. So we have 2x times 3 and then 2. So this one is equal to 1. This one is also equal to 1. Therefore, 1 times 1 times 3 halves equals 3 halves. So the limit of sine 3x over sine 2x as x approaches 0 is equal to 3 halves and this is our final answer. Now there's also another way in solving this one so let's try to make use of that solution. Our goal is to make our numerator and denominator be like uh, sine 3x over 3x and sine 2x over 2x so that we can make use of uh, the special limits that we have uh, discussed earlier. Now, how do we make our numerator look like this? Since we have 3x in our denominator and we need 3x here in the denominator, we have to multiply our numerator by 3x over 3x. Anyway, this is simply equal to 1, so we are not altering the value. Now, in our denominator, we need 2x in the denominator, so we have to multiply this one by 2x over 2x. Now, notice that we have different values in our numerator and denominator. However, this is simply equal to 1 since our numerator is equal to 1 and our denominator is also equal to 1. Therefore, we are not altering the original value of the function. Now, if we simplify this one, this becomes 3x sine of 3x over 3x all over 2x sine of 2x all over 2x. Now, this one, sine 3x over 3x, is already equal to 1. This one also is equal to 1. So what remains is 3x and 2x. So we have 3x over 2x. Since we have x's in both our numerator and denominator, we can just cancel them out. So we have 3 halves. Therefore, the limit of sine 3x over sine 2x as x approaches 0 is equal to 3 halves. And this is our final answer. Now let's move on to our fourth example. We have uh, the limit of tan x over x as x approaches 0. Now we know that tangent is just equal to uh, sine over cosine. Therefore, we can rewrite this one as sine x over cosine x all over x. So, if we 
simplify this further, we multiply our numerator by the reciprocal of our denominator. So this becomes 1 over x since this is x over 1. Now we can just uh, interchange the positions of cosine and x. So this becomes sine x over x times 1 over cosine x. Now, this one is 1. Now, we know that cosine x or cosine of 0, since we are approaching 0 here, is equal to 1. Therefore, this becomes 1 over 1. And 1 over 1 is 1 times 1 is equal to 1. Therefore, the limit of 10x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. This is our final answer. Now let's move to another example. We have the limit of 1 minus cosine 2x over 3x as x approaches 0. Notice that our inside angle is not equal to our denominator. So what we can do is to multiply our numerator and denominator by 2 so that we can interchange the position of 2 and 3 here to make this uh, in the form 1 minus cosine 2x over 2x. So we get 1 minus cosine 2x over 2x times 2 over 3. This one is equal to 0, so 0 times 2 thirds is 0. Therefore, the limit of 1 minus cosine of 2x over 3x as x approaches 0 equals 0. This is our final answer. Now, try solving this one. The limit of 1 minus cosine x over sine x as x approaches 0. Pause this video and if you already have your answer, continue and check whether your answer is correct. I think you already have your answer, so let's solve this one. The easiest way is to multiply our numerator and denominator by x over x. So this becomes 1 minus cosine x. And we'll make use of this value here. So we have x times we have 1x here, so we get x and sine x. This one is equal to 0. This one is equal to 1. Therefore, 0 times 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, the limit of 1 minus cosine x over sine x as x approaches 0 is equal to zero. This is our final answer. Now another way of solving this one is to multiply our um, numerator and denominator by 1 over x. So our numerator becomes 1 minus cosine x over x all over sine x over x our denominator x here comes from this. So this becomes 0 over 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. Still have the same answer. That ends our discussion about limit of trig functions involving special limits. So I hope you learned something new in this lesson. And if you have questions or clarifications, you may comment down below so we can address your questions in our next videos. That's all for this video.